Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live at VMworld 2012. We're here in the Hang Center, Hang Space, uh, right across from where the keynotes are. Uh, we've got the CEO roundtable going on. It's a very interesting, eclectic mix of CEOs. Uh, Pat Gelsinger right now is speaking. We've got uh, Michael Dell up there, Tom Georgians, and, and, uh, and I believe uh, Paul Moritz and Joe Tucci are also up there. But we're here in the Cube, and um, this is day one of VMworld 2012, I'm here with Anil Seda, who is with Post Media. Uh, he's involved in uh, the storage side of the business. He supervises the mid-range services and, and storage, and uh, we're here at uh, VMworld. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Yeah, so um, it's quite an event now, up to 20,000 people. Um, I've been surprised at the crowd. You've got your VMUG button on, That's so right. uh, VMUG ambassador, so uh, yeah. it's one of the most robust user groups out there, for sure. Right. It's uh, just been an amazing explosion of, of innovation, uh, both on the supply side and on the, on the consumer side, hasn't it? That is correct, and in fact, I'm the Manitoba VMUG leader, and that's where I'm wearing this. Uh, I was out at the VMUG booth earlier, uh, volunteering at the booth. Yeah, VMUG's are great events. You know, I've been to several. Our, our V expert Stu Miniman goes to all of them in, in New England. And yeah, uh, that's where the value is. Yeah, yeah, it's really where the rubber meets the road. You meet all the practitioners and. Uh, that's right. Yeah, so, um, well let's talk about, first tell us a little bit about Post Media and your role there. So Post Media is the largest uh, newspaper company in Canada by way of circulation. Uh, we own 10 of the top dailies uh, in Canada. And uh, we also have an extensive online and mobile platform environment, so we focus on uh, news and media content generation, but at the same time, we also have uh, an FB and format uh, content management system, which actually people can subscribe to for news feeds. Okay, and, and your role there? Uh, I'm the mid-range services and storage supervisor with Post Media Network. I manage all of our backup recovery, storage, and I have an indirect role into virtualization architecture, and uh, I also manage our Unix, uh, Linux platforms. Okay, so um, so how do you, you utilize VMware? T take us through you know your journey from VMware. When did it start, and yeah. where where are you today, and where are you going? So uh, I joined Post Media just last year, but before that, uh, a year before that, Post Media started onto the VMware platform. The initial move was slow uh, because users were fear, uh, fe uh, a little bit fearful of uh, how virtualization would affect the in uh, environment and uh, what kind of impacts it would be on performance and agility. And uh, the traditional sense was always that, okay, you're moving to uh, mission critical database environments, you're moving uh, our web server environments into a virtualization architecture that we have no control over, was the fear. And uh, again, uh, we've kind of influenced the users, tried to make them understand how virtualization works, shown them true successes with virtualization, and uh, we've won over the trust of a majority of the organization in that sense. H how, what percent of your apps are virtualized? Uh, as of now, we have around 65% virtualization completed. And so 65% uh, of your apps or 60, yeah, right, Of right. our entire IT infrastructure. Yeah, okay. And we are now branching out and actually virtualizing our remote infrastructure also, so we've got 10 remote sites that we are in the process of virtualizing. So, talk about um, the impact of, uh, of virtualization on storage, right? I mean, as, as Steve Herod was saying today in the keynotes, he's done a great job with compute and memory, you know, storage with the VAAI efforts and the integration has, has been better and obviously backup has been better. Is it, is it where you want it to be as a practitioner? Is it fixed, um, so to speak? I, I, in the past with these independent silos that, okay, this is a server group, that's a storage group, and they both worked independently, I don't think there was much of an efficiency from an operational standpoint coming into the IT infrastructure as a whole. Uh, because what was happening was the skill set was being diminished in, in one way because uh, virtualization architects were not really seeing the underlying benefits of storage, and the same was not applying to the storage environment. So I think with the vStorage APIs that have come out through VMware, there has been a tremendous integration or some kind of a sync uh, to manage or leverage your performance and uh, the IT infrastructure as a whole. Uh, we personally have observed that uh, with the use of uh, the VAAI uh, API, we've been able to move forward with our virtualization strategy much faster. Uh, specifically when you run uh, RDM disks, I don't know about you, 
uh, raw device mappings. Um, it makes it a lot more easier to control those devices. Uh, your storage vMotion becomes a lot more simpler because CPU is offloaded to the storage. Uh, the same is applied to your uh, uh, cloning capabilities. So earlier, if you would clone a VM, it would take maybe an hour or two hours depending on the type of VM it was. Now when you offload that work back to the storage array, it finishes off in minutes. Uh, so there's a huge plus to it. And now with vCR5, uh, VMware has introduced newer capabilities, uh, also with storage awareness like VASA. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, you can kind of correlate as to how the disk provisioning works uh, how the thin pool architecture would work, and uh, they all work together a lot better now. Are you uh, on vSphere 5? Uh, partially. Uh, we have our lab environment on vSphere 5. Uh, our backup software was old, and that was the only hindrance in moving forward with vSphere 5. What so was the hindrance? Was your backup uh, the software? backup software. It wouldn't work with the, the newer capabilities of vSphere 5. So we are now in the process of upgrading our backup software, and then we'll move forward with the vSphere 5. Okay, can you talk about your storage infrastructure in some detail, what, is, yes. what does it look like? So we have a couple of VNX uh, 5700s. Uh, we also have uh, two Clarion uh, CX4 960s. We have uh, three HP EVAs, we have two Sun storage arrays. Uh, so we've got a good amount of uh, storage infrastructure in place. Uh, our focus is always on uh, media and uh, video, uh, like pictures and video type of content because we are a newspaper company. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we, uh, we are getting into uh, real-time analytics. Uh, social media is a huge uh, new demand uh, for newspaper organizations, specifically for the ones that are going digital. So we need high-performance computing. Uh, we need sustained computing for capabilities. And uh, we are looking for an environment that is agile in the sense that we can either scale up very quickly or we can provide performance uh, for random IO loads. Okay, so, um, and then your backup infrastructure? Uh, yeah, so we use an uh, HP data protector uh, software in our uh, backup infrastructure, and again, uh, up until now, the focus wasn't as much on the backup infrastructure because it was doing its job, but uh, with newer capabilities that are out there, it's time to upgrade it. Okay, so you're, you're, you're moving to another backup um, software environment? We don't know yet uh, okay. if it will be a brand new software or whether it will be just an upgrade of HP Data Protector, but right now, okay, uh, that's, that's the you're, But you're moving to vSphere 5 and you need a backup that's, solution for that's vSphere done, yeah, 5. So that's done, yeah, that's given an upgrade to Data Protector or some other solution that supports uh, vSphere 5. That's correct. And, and the, so, um, in, pr in terms of the storage infrastructure, in terms of its, 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 its relationship with your VMware infrastructure, what does that look like? Is all the storage um, integrated? Uh, no, just uh, we, we have, as I mentioned, we are only 65% virtualized yet. Yep. So we still have some test dev environments uh, and we have some part of our production environment running on old legacy systems. And that is the reason we have to keep the old storage around. Okay. Uh, and uh, as we move forward with virtualization, we are also moving them into uh, our EMC storage array. Uh, and the VNX? Uh, the VNX. So VNX is obviously, we just did a survey in Wikibon and VNX scored very high marks for uh, integration. I would fully agree with that. It was number one, actually. Uh, um, in terms of the ro robustness and the capabilities it provides, like automated tiering through fast. We didn't have that before, we were dying for that in terms of the performance capabilities because what you had to do as a company was always keep your uh, mission critical data on flash, even though it was not always used. So now with automated tiering, we do use flash as a major strategy, but then we need, when we need disk space, or we, we need massive amount of disk space, but not all data is hot, we can move the less used data to a lower uh, NL SAS or SAS kind of a, or SATA disk. Yeah, we evaluated, uh, I think it was probably 80 integration points uh, and then we talk to users to um, weight the importance of each of those integration okay. points. So we, we scored the number of integration points was binary, yes, no. Then we weighted the value of that integration point and then sort of rated the quality uh, on each. And I say VNX for second year in a row was number one, um, which is impressive. That's a lot of work. I mean, you can see this list is just it's endless. Right, you know, well, so. one more advantage is like, uh, now you don't need multiple solutions for our remote sites also. Right. We can use a common Unisphere uh, remote manager software. So the look and feel is same across the board, the same kind of software, it integrates well, plus it's got all these plugins that work with VMware. So it, it does a very comprehensive job. So what does that do for you, Anil? Drives your IT productivity? It significantly. your environment? Uh, and it, it reduces the amount of issues that we had in our environment. I can give you an example. Last year we were struggling with storage performance. 
in a major way. Uh, in a sense that we were having uh, P1s created multiple times uh, in the week. So uh, after mo uh, making a partial move to VNX, we've started to see significant improvements. Other EMC products that integrate with VNX is like the EMC Recover Point appliances. They have been a significant benefit to us also because data replication is far more simplified. Now VNX offers block and file together. So that's a plus again, because all of a sudden you can consolidate these individual file servers all across the world. So now you have an integrated option. It, it, it is all working off the storage array. You can provision far better. So it's giving a significant boost. Excellent. Um, so what's, what's the future hold for you guys? What? The future is looking very bright. Uh, we are looking forward to moving away from uh, the older traditional arrays to uh, VNX. Our workload is moving there. Uh, our uh, newspaper.com infrastructure, which is like a web farm of uh, online websites, is going to move into that. Uh, our mission critical workloads like Oracle database and other environments, we are working with our application teams to virtualize them. And uh, again, uh, we have successfully uh, worked with VMware SRM to perform a data center failover. Uh, not just once, multiple times, and uh, we are just hoping to utilize all the capabilities that VCR5 gives. In fact, we're like lapping it up. So yeah, <laughs> so you're going to virtualize Oracle? Oh yeah, I've virtualized Oracle before. You're uh, going to use OVM for that? Or? All VMs, yeah. yeah. No, OVM, Oracle Virtual Machine? No, <laughs> de definitely not. That's not the plan for sure. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Oracle... I'm so surprised to hear that. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, it's not too surprising for me, no, but I'm I know where you're coming from, I know. <laughs> so, um, okay, so, so how does Oracle react when, you, when, you, when they find out that you're going to go in that direction? Do they well, say, great, we'll help? Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. you know how, you must have heard from different sources how Oracle course, yeah. is opposing it, but in my opinion, Oracle needs to be come forward as a partner and not as an opposer. Yes, they've got their own product, but uh, their own product has certain benefits. VMware is an industry leader in virtualization today, so customers have their own unique requirements. Instead of opposing uh, their customer requirements and kind of hindering their business, it is always better to work with the customer. Uh, at the end of the day, Oracle wants to make money on Oracle licensing, of course, sure. and sure. Uh, there are always good ways of doing it, is my opinion on that. Okay, so so but you've chosen, you said you've, you've done uh, virtualized Oracle applications in the past, right. using non- uh, Enterprise Oracle ERP virtualization or non-Oracle non hypervisor. Right. Um, and there's certain implied risks of doing that from the standpoint of Oracle supporting it or not supporting that, but the business benefits you've decided outweigh the potential risk. Uh, actually, even the risks are not that high. Many people don't understand that Oracle tells you that they don't support VMware explicitly. That's fine. Uh, they don't support your storage array. They don't support your hardware server. So that's nothing new. Yeah. Uh, plus, anytime they come back to you and say that, okay, you need to demonstrate uh, this particular From function physical, in a physical yeah. machine, today's technology has significantly improved. You can actually quickly run a backup software, perform a granular recovery to a physical hardware using the same image from a VM, and the bare metal recovery works great. You can actually work with them on that. So well, this is a lot of tongue in cheek because we've done a lot of work on this. We've talked to a number of customers and our advice is damn the torpedoes. You absolutely should virtualize Oracle. The benefits are significant unless there's a really strong business reason not to do it. Well, we had like $600,000 of savings in the past when I virtualized Oracle every year. <laughs> Why <laughs> would those savings come from? Uh, it was primarily around uh, uh, relieving the old infrastructure and of course, uh, consolidating your Oracle license. Ah, so that's why. Yeah, so over a five year period, the $600,000 uh, saving well, was there. So. Which is significant. That uh, drops right to the bottom yeah. line and makes the CFO happy, that's outstanding. <laughs> All right, Anil, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your story with us. Really Thank appreciate you very it. much for the opportunity. Good luck with everything and good luck with the VMUGs. Thank you very much. All right, keep it right here. This is Dave Vellante and we'll be right back with our next guest, uh, who's uh, BJ Jenkins from EMC's BRS division, right after this. <laughs>